welcome back to The Power of Perspective, the talk show with Sean. And I'm BJ. And man, uh, we are so excited to be back again. I always say that. I mean that from underneath the bottom of my heart. Um, uh, BJ, man, this is our, our season finale of uh, season three. I was thinking today that it's really, um, man, we got three seasons in. Three. Time's flying. Three, I know, my gosh. Um, this is episode five. Uh, we, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to uh, personally, on um, behalf of myself and BJ, um, just send uh, our appreciation for uh, everybody who's uh, taken a view of our shows, been with us, whether you're new, old, um, as a viewer, whatever. Like We truly appreciate you spending um, your time with us and sharing your time on Earth, you know what I mean, that you have uh, with us with these shows. Um, BJ, man, um, it's, it's been a, a, just a really incredible uh, continuation of life. I, you know, I'm, I've enjoyed 2018. I'm looking forward to 2019, you know, God willing. Um, my holiday was really good. You know, it was, it was an extension of just living life enjoyable as possible. Um, how's it been for you? I think uh, this holiday season so far has been quite the journey, man. You know, it's been some new obstacles with the, the loss of my grandfather, who was um, the alpha male, um, the, the elder who would bring the whole family together. Had a, I've, I've had a lot, of, a lot of time spending with my grandmother, who, uh, though we're supposed to be mourning, yes. I've, I've had a chance to rejoice and reflect and be thankful, celebrate celebrate because uh, I feel like I gave him his roses mm -hmm. while he was here we had a lot of good times so cool. and though and though we you know we get teary eyed as I look at all the different pictures hey man there's a lot of families out here who don't have that so if I could thank the Lord for one thing it would just be would be family and that to me is the greatest gift of all Gosh, my gosh. That's beautiful, man. You talk, you, you talk, you talk about getting teary eyed. I, I forgot yeah. we was going on yeah, one of the podcasts for a second. Definitely. But um, truly, truly, um, I think that later on in the show, I would like to uh, touch upon, you know, the uh, the uh, um, having an alpha male as a as a father, and uh, how that relates to uh, you know um, the state of insecurity or maybe even crushing it. Um, with that said, we we are if you have a, if you have an, uh, uh, read the context clues, uh, we are going to be talking about about the state of insecurity, the spirit of insecurity, as I like to call it. Um, and the reason why I wanted to talk about this was just because I feel like personally, professionally, um, in the in the 33 years of my life, having some experience with the with the spirit of insecurity, um, and then coming out of that as well, and also just you know, people watching, observing. You know, you observe as you as you like to call it, um, the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know, being present in the moment. You tend to notice different things about different people. You know, there's many people that that, that uh, um, exist. Obviously, there's seven, eight billion people, and we're different races, we're different creeds, we're different uh, genders, we have different interests. But I've been noticing a lot, and not just recently, just in general, probably for the past ten years, that the spirit of insecurity is in the resting who it infects. Mm -hmm. It's interesting uh, who is infected with the disease of uh, the spirit of insecurity. I like to compare it to a landmine. You could be having a, a good conversation, the battlefield seems like it's, it's cool, or the playing field, whatever field you want to use, the spirit, it's just, it's just going one way and you say one bad thing just like a landmine and I hope I don't offend any of our veterans that might be viewing the show. Absolutely. You step on that landmine, ba boom. Right. All we was talking about was sports or religion or, you know, pick a topic, right. man. It could be uh, music, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. It could right. be, do you like Amigos or Boom? I step on one landmine and be like, <laughs> I, I really don't know what you... Boom! <laughs> <laughs> the daggone conversation just changes one one direction just off of one sentence. One, se one word. One sometimes. word. Thank you. But see, that's why I truly believe that, uh, you know, I, I sometimes call this a disease. Yep. Right. Because I mean, like you said, like everything could be going well, but the spirit of insecurity, like when you're affected with the spirit of insecurity, it's like the lens that you're looking through with life. It's like the, you know, the costume that you have on makes you feel so uptight about everything. Somebody can make a comment. Somebody can ask a question. Shoot, somebody could look at you, which you believe the wrong way. And because you got the spirit of insecurity, it could go from zero to a hundred real quick. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just because you're insecure. And later on in the show, as you said, I would like to talk about um, some specific situations that have occurred because people have been insecure. Just bring it up to say, man, um, it's just, and I want us to really go as in-depth as we can about this because just because you're confident, I think me and you are very confident. I'm confident in myself. I know confidence exudes and is, you know, 
permeates our view, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, to the universe, um, it don't mean that at some point we have not been infected with the or spirit of insecurity. Or we don't have low points sometimes weekly. Right. It, the duration could vary. Right. I may have a low point two or three days, but right. that doesn't necessarily mean that the <laughs> the spirit of insecurity is going to continue to grow. As I said, it, it can inflate the room. Right. You have to you have to learn when to uh, switch up the game. But I didn't mean to cut you off, nah, Sean. No, nah, no, nah, that's beautiful, uh, BJ. Um, before we get into some of the questions from uh, some of the viewers who uh, sent us mm -hmm. um, some questions, and thank you for so much appreciation to you all for uh, sending us these questions. We got some really uh, robust questions. We got some really uh, heavy questions that I want to get into. Yeah. Um, but a question that I have for you is just just to spark it off is. What are some things that you think spark the spirit of insecurity? Like, can you give some examples or maybe some qualities or some situations that might cause people to step into that spirit of insecurity? I like to make insecurity a uh, feminine presence, uh, but to our viewers, please don't take my words and necessarily use them as the gospel. This is how I look at things. Again, this is in my opinion. I look at insecurity as a beautiful woman who definitely has different faces. Now, when we were preteens in the late 90s going into the early 2000s, insecurity had a lot to do with that's, uh, the women. Mm -hmm. Or back in the day, the music that was dominating the, the airways was, was gangster rap. So it was about the promiscuous lifestyle, how many women you could mess around with, how, many how, much, how much jewelry you yeah, had on, yeah. who had the latest kicks, right. 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 how, how uh, physically dominant you were. And as I told you off camera, it just hit me, man. Uh, insecurity seems to be the side chick or the mistress to masculinity. Can you say more about that? Yes, sir. And I'm going to repeat that. Insecurity is the side piece or the mistress to masculinity. On the outside, a lot of, a lot of guys that we, we both know, it seems like they go, they go overboard in the weight room. <laughs> they go overboard in a party scene. Right. And then they have this, this mental illusion mm -hmm. that they're the only male. And when it comes to being an alpha male 101, mm -hmm. I like to think I got the handbook at an early age with my father. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I, I believe he even gave me some of the cheat codes because he was present in my life. And I know you can agree with that. Absolutely. But Absolutely. behind that, I, and I know that this comes from a father, you know, talking to a son. Sometimes when you overdo it, you need to talk about how many women you're seeing. Or you need to talk about how many guys you fight. The flip side of that could be, I'm sensing some insecurity. Absolutely. Or now that we're in our early to mid-30s, it seems like we've come in contact with uh, the gentlemen who are not necessarily senior citizens. Mm -hmm. But definitely uh, on the other side of the mountain, on the physical, but they should be at their highest peak mentally. So why is the competition with us in mid-30s when you're supposed to be, not necessarily our predecessors or our elders, but we should be looking at you as, you know what, man, give me a visual or a module of what I'm going to be like at 50. Not, not, if I didn't know any better, I think my competition with these 50-year-olds it's just like being at the playground in fourth grade. Right. There has to be some change. So with that being said in my initial statement, which was insecurity seems to be the mistress of masculinity or machismo, all that tough guy talking, all that, you know, going on and on, and it seems like the room is inflating with just male dominance. The moment a woman even gives you an idea of the same type of promiscuous lifestyle, I said it off air. I guess that's where the domestic violence begins, the bloody nose, the combat, the, the social media blast, the calling out a name. It just seems like, wow, man, you're, you're very insecure. So I guess what you're saying is, is, that, is that one of, a, a, couple of the, a couple of the things that can spawn a birth insecurity, um, and I think you dealt with it in, in a very broad way, too. You talked about different uh, developmental stages of life. You know, you talk about a uh, uh, social status, you talk about access or lack thereof, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, money, mm -hmm. uh, 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 you talk about clothes, I mean, all these different things, right? And it's true, like, the lack of these things can spawn insecurity. 
And also, you know, you also brought up relationships, and we got oh, yeah. we got to get into that because you're right. Um, even being a you know a psychotherapist and working with couples, like you do see, and I've said this even in past blogs, um, women tend to be very sophisticated when it comes to their their linguistic ability um, and other areas of their life. Most men, I don't say most men, but many men, because of the stereotypes that we've had to like live in, the spirit of stereotypes, that could be another show in itself. Um, you know, it's like men, well, men don't talk a lot. Men don't do this. Men don't X, Y, and Z. But it's like most men, all, all men they have to, have to defer to is the physical aspects of what they do. Well, I know I'm strong and more powerful than her, so I can't really keep up with her uh, uh, linguistically, can't really keep up with her in terms of like, how I deal with my emotions. So. I always know that I can hit her. So you're right. I think that sometimes domestic abuse does occur because you have uh, insecure men. But also, I think that if we look at it, if we look at it from a, a what we call in counseling, uh, uh, infinite regressive, infinite regressive. Mm -hmm. We keep looking underneath the uh, uh, surface. Mm -hmm. I think that we find too that just like we can say a lot of men are insecure, a lot of the things that women bring into a relationship are because of women's insecurities too that may, as you said, expand um, or uh, expose just a lot more of the male's insecurities. Mm -hmm. Which, I, again, I, I think if you're, if you're a secure person, you know, those things don't happen. Um, I like that you said that, man. So how about this? How about we go to a break real quick, and then we come back, and then we expand, and pretty much go into more depth about the spirit of insecurity. We well, can do that. Please stay tuned. Uh, we appreciate you for giving us your time sharing with us. We'll be right back with the spirit of insecurity with the power of perspective with Sean and BJ. Welcome back to the power of perspective with Sean and BJ. We're talking about the spirit of insecurity. Um, before we had uh, went to the first break, BJ, I had asked you uh, what were some of the things that you felt spawned and birthed uh, the spirit of insecurity. Um, you had talked about uh, relationship stuff. You had talked about um, you know having a lack of you know certain things whenever you're at a at a at an adolescent stage, at at a teenage stage, and there's 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 a multitude of other things that I could add to that from money, you know. Um, you know, uh, uh, from not feeling like somebody has the intelligence that other people have, you know, from people feeling like, you know, they can't control certain things in their life. Like, there's so many different things that make people feel insecure. I want to ask you a question. We have a question here from, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to be confidential. We have uh, LJ from Atlanta who sent in a, a very amazing question. And I think it relates to some of the, some of the things that you said in the intro of the show. He asks, can you be an insecure alpha male? LJ from Atlanta? LJ from Atlanta. <laughs> Most definitely, yes. I believe so. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Most definitely, yes. And this comes back to my statement in the last segment. The reason why I said insecurity seems to be the side chick or mistress to masculinity is because masculinity tends to cheat with insecurity with some males. You do realize that this is a case by case Absolutely. statement. Absolutely. Uh, the two men at this table, right? The yeah. two men at this table uh, definitely um, are not part of that equation. However, uh, Mr. LJ, I will say most definitely. I gave a scenario while we were on break, um, working out, you know, at the local gyms or whatnot. In my youth, this is where growth is so important in defining your character. There has to be some growth. Oh my goodness, yes. While you're working out, one of the most key things that can throw off a, a, a man who's in his youth and not in his right state of mind, you're working out, you're bench pressing. Another guy comes up to you, whether it's a different race, different size, he might be, he might tower over you, you're more physically dominant, you're more appealing to the woman. <laughs> can I work out with you? Can I interchange with you? Can we alternate sets? Uh -huh. And I say that to a lot of our viewers out there who know what I mean, because in your mind, especially nowadays in 2018, we got earbuds on. So internally, my insecurity is like, nah, man, you're going to throw me off. But my masculinity might overdo it sometimes and say, yeah, sure. But here's the catch. God forbid that man is two times stronger than you. 
that's where the insecurity happened. And I've been guilty of it mm -hmm. on both ends. Mm -hmm. I've been physically stronger than the men that I'm working in and out with. Mm -hmm. And I've also been weaker. Mm -hmm. But at the lowest point in my life is when I realized that this is where insecurity has got to start uh, getting out of my life when it comes to the important thing is that I'm, I'm here. See, I, we're in the gym. See, that's what I, I'm, I'm going to address that because when you said, please do. When you said, and I agree with you, I think my answer too is that yes, you can definitely be an uh, insecure alpha male. Um, I'll go into, into that in a second. Um, but when you talk about how you were stronger to some men and you're weaker to some men, right? Like, that's where I think that we have to bring a part of the solution. So we're talking a lot about the problem is, is that people have the spirit of insecurity. But there's a thin line between all opposites, as, if, as I wrote in one of my books. And you explained it as you were weaker to some men, but we can look at it as you being weaker, or we can look at it as there's just different levels of strength, right? Why can't you just be able to bench press 250 versus somebody who's able to bench press 450, right? Maybe that's your max, as they say in the gym, the world of lifting weights, right? Um, and you should be like that. Shouldn't somebody, somebody, if somebody's seven foot one and they can bench press 450, um, excuse me, but I'm not feeling insecure about myself because I'm six foot one and a half and I can bench press 250. Like, and, and that's why I think that some of the solution is like, be you, be comfortable in yourself. Like, appreciate what you can do versus what you can't do. And I think that that gap is what causes the spirit of insecurity. Oh, she over there, she can do this. Dang, I can't do that. But what can you do? Mm -hmm. Be, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you could do, do it 100%, do it 150%. It's, it's a puzzle, man. We all fit into the bigger scheme of things. I did want to say this. Not only do I, 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 I agree with you, BJ, uh, to uh, uh, Brother LJ's question, is that I was saying counseling, I've actually found that not only can alpha males um, be, insecure. be insecure, but sometimes uh, insecurity can kind of spawn them to become alpha males. Oh, <laughs> oh, I sure repeat that. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. sometimes the spirit of insecurity causes people to become alpha males, to become toxic alpha males, right? Because then there's, 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 there's also different types of alpha males. You have alpha males that have, because they're so, they'll never admit it, but because they feel so insecure about certain things, they become an alpha male to protect them from these in, these insecurities ever happening to them. Some people get assigned a role and don't even deserve it. Yeah, Their exactly. character does not even match it. Exactly. He just looks the part. Exactly. But his character says something totally different. You're sitting here going on and on and on about, like in, in this case, about how strong you are, but if I didn't know any better, you know, you're also displaying some weak tactics mm -hmm. if you appear that you go overboard. That's yeah. why I said... Yeah. The opposite of insecurity sometimes seems to be, yeah. you know, uh, that, that masculinity pro uh, process. But I don't want to make it like, you know, we don't want to just attack the men. It can go also with women. Oh Someone who's totally infatuated yeah. with uh, just their beauty. Someone who's constantly uh, the selfie selfie. Yeah. You know, just constantly looking at themselves. Look, God made you beautiful, but I don't think you're going to change in 15 seconds. Yeah. And sometimes that's internally because she's at competition with someone who's not in the mirror. The main person you're supposed to be competing with on a day-to-day -day basis is the person in the mirror. But after that person said, you look good today, after the person in the mirror lets you know you look good, why isn't that good enough? Ooh, ooh, my, uh, man, you talked about social media. You know, um, I like IG, you know what I'm saying? I'm on every, you know, because, I have, good. because I have a company. You know, Instagram, you know, I'm, this, I'm, I'm bringing this up on a spot. So if somebody came up with this turn, I'm not stealing, I'm not taking it. I didn't hear this before, it just came to me you know, organically in the moment, but it should be called insecure generations. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? That's what the IG should stand for, because really, I mean, you have so many people posting a, posting a life that they're not really living because they're insecure. Before we go on to the next question, I feel like this is somewhat appropriate, because the spirit of insecurity, man, I mean, it pervades us all different points in life. Some of us, you know, get through, we, get, we, we transcend it. Um, it's friends, you know, we're around, it's difficult for me to be around, let me, let me, let me rephrase this. It's not difficult for me to be around people who are insecure. I feel like sometimes your security, your state of, your spirit of secureness can actually help them if they accept it. But sometimes you have to be around whether it's friends, associates, co-workers, in-laws, family members, you know what I mean? Uh, oh, I'm in-law. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The, 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 the spirit of that, because you have to be around it so much, it can be, it, it can be wicked. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It can really be wicked because it's just it's just, it's a, it's an energy. What you say it was a, um, uh, the atmosphere. Oh yeah. You see, the atmosphere can change. And the reason why I bring that up, BJ, is because Cam. You know, we're gonna talk about music in a second. Cameron says something so true in one of his songs. He said, "One of my favorites." Yeah, he Dipset. said. He said, "Yeah, Mr. Mr. Dipset said, I'm envied by most of you, so I don't get close to you." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like that one line is like, it like killer. Like he killed it with that line because, like, sometimes you really just to keep things peaceful, just to keep things healthy. It's like you got, you gotta sometimes stay away from insecure people um, because their wickedness can really bring out something in you that really is very dark and doesn't need to be uh, uh, um, touched, if you will. Yeah, because, because some people, I'm sorry to cut you off, because no. some people they don't, they not really comfortable in a insecure state. But they, they've been living in it so long that they just riding out with it. And they're not really in, interested in improving. And people like that, like you said, man, I'm, I'm envy. And I'm not saying that we special or anything, but when you are a secure being, man, it's like you have this light. This is not a new idea. But you have this light and darkness will preach to, to, to attack you. So, so you got to just to keep things healthy, to keep these people. Uh, I'm envy by you, by most of you. So, like you said, I don't get close to you. And there's a limit to it, you know. There's there's nothing wrong with uh, having, uh, you know, an alarm. There's nothing wrong with being an an alarmist. And what I mean by that is, okay, I said I'm gonna go up in here for 20 minutes. I'm gonna have to kill that energy if y'all just, you know, keep pushing up off that insecurity. <laughs> exactly. Because what you talking about exactly. a psychiatrist, exactly. a psychologist, you're dealing with the soul and the mind. When you look at the root of those words, psychiatrist or a psychologist, with the Greek word meaning the soul and the spirit. Yes. Let me tell you something, man. Before you go up into these venues or these arenas or these bars or clubs or get togethers with the in laws, especially around like this time, you have to, you know, spiritually be ready. You know, and there's nothing wrong so with true. there's oh nothing God. wrong with training. So there's true. nothing wrong with spiritually training. Yes. That could be another show. How are you Dang. training spiritually? That's such a good point. Whether man. it's you know through the music, you go with visuals, whether you're watching a podcast like this, you're doing something on social media, whether you're exercising yeah. physically, but how are you getting ready to deal with that? Because you know, I have a whole uh, <laughs> a whole manual on how I think I can help some of our viewers how to train spiritually because one of the things that you have to get ready for is when you're secure you have to almost I don't I don't, I don't want to say you have to assume but just get ready for some yeah. type of spark some type of question to throw you off yeah. yeah but like a wise master like a martial art person like a, a good boxer expect the unexpected expect the unexpected BJ, um, with that said, man, let's go ahead and uh, take our second break. Mm -hmm. um, do want to uh, maybe bring up uh, Mr. LJ's question again uh, before you go on to uh, more questions. But stay with us. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the power of perspective. Welcome back to the Power Perspective, Season Three, Episode Five, the final show of the year. Yes, Mr. Sean. Before we left, uh, Mr. LJ from Atlanta mm -hmm. had made a statement, or excuse me, a question about Alpha Male. And off camera, you said you had more uh, to touch on. This yeah. is such a broad subject. Absolutely. Please <laughs> enlighten the viewers. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know. Um, Whenever I got this question, it reminded me of, you know, I, I want to say that I'm a hist I'm an I'm a avid historian, but I, I like to read stuff for the, for the purposes of um, figuring out how it relates to, like, well-being. You know what I'm saying? That's just, I'm a therapist, psychotherapist. I like to figure out how history relates to the modern-day person in a, in, in a way that relates to well-being. But it reminded me of, uh, I, I was reading The 40 Laws of Power, and Robert Greene had brought up, um, I believe his name is uh, Chessery uh -huh. Borgia. Who was a uh, um, correct an Italian politician, you know, uh, of his time, among many other things. And uh, one of the things that uh, I believe Robert Greene, if I'm not mistaken, wrote in that book was that um, Borgia had uh, killed another man just because the man was more charismatic than him, mm -hmm. right? So this is a very respected man. I mean, and, but he was so. And again, I, obviously, I've never met you know uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Borgia. Don't necessarily know too much about his career, but. I would postulate that if that's the reason why he killed him, because he was the man was more more charismatic than him, that death. This is why I say the spirit of insecurity is so wicked, because it can cause you to do something like take another person's life. 
also a similar story. Um, I couldn't find where I had uh, researched this years ago, but back whenever um, you know uh, the American troops were going after Uday and Kuse, uh, Saddam's sons, oh. I remember either reading it or hearing it. So please, you know, don't take this as a fact because I had trouble finding it. Um, but there was a story where um, one of the sons uh, had shot a man at a, uh, outside of a party simply because the dude rolled up and had a nicer car to him. Now there are a bunch of stories of, uh, of these it sons. It sounds real familiar to good <laughs> story. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I know and what that, you're going. And I wanted to just say, you know, not only a lot of leaders, a lot of leaders are, are very insecure. I think that uh, Robert Greene also writes about how most masters are insecure. So just because you're a celebrity, just because you're at the top of the food chain, just because you're an alpha male, alpha female, that does not mean that you're immune to insecurity and to being on some bullshit sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> For lack of better words. <laughs> uh, do you, are you, I don't want to say are you finished, but is there a part two to your statement? Um, no, nah, man, I mean, not necessarily a part, there, could, there probably could be a part two, but um, any thoughts about that from, just from uh, uh, how you say it, maybe you have something to say about how those two stories relate to some of the hip hop stuff. Even though they are worldly we can make them local to our everyday experiences. Absolutely. And I know some of our viewers live in uh, the urban setting, so they can definitely relate to a person who has a, a nicer car. Yeah. Or as we talk numerous times, we're in our, our, our early stages. Um, we believe we're in our prime, uh, you know, the early 30s. It seems like, you know, sometimes you can receive hate just based off of demographics, just based off of you being in your youth, mm -hmm. you know? But that is an individual journey that I wish we could, you know, take more time to invest in some of these individuals and, and, and wonder why they may have uh, the state of insecurity. But that spirit of insecurity is a negative one. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the only way to alter that is, what did I say, uh, you know, off camera, uh, fearless. You, you do realize one of the ways to combat insecurity is um, overcoming a fear, overcoming the low point of your life. And if you haven't done that yet, then obviously, you know, that's something that I don't want to push on anybody because God forbid the lowest point of your life could be someone else's uh, uh, departure from this planet. Oh, my God. So, you know, oh that could take a while for you to deal with that. But when it comes to these incidents here, you know, in regards to, you know, people being killed for having charisma, yeah. you know, that's a character flaw that yeah. I see, not, necess not necessarily to that extent. Absolutely. But we all deal with that in the workplace. We deal with that... Um, in, in our later stages of life. Don't get me wrong, I mean, towards the end of uh, my 20s, a young man told me out in uh, one of the counties that I was working at that the moment you turn 30, your Achilles uh, is more subjected to be, to, to pop. Mm. And, and lo and behold, now I don't, I don't know if this was the spirit, but it comes back to what you're thinking in your mind. I was playing ball. I almost popped my, my Achilles. A week after I turned 30. Now, I don't believe in coincidence. I believe that my mind was already fragile. Uh, the fragility it. of my thoughts. The fragility. Mm. Well, and again, that, that connects with the spirit, man. Absolutely. You know, like, I had already been afraid. Like, oh, I'm 30. But if I would have just looked at it as, you know, I'll continue to stretch. Yeah. I should have been already spiritually training as well as physically training. Training. Excuse me. No, beautiful, beautiful point. Beautiful point. I want to talk, I want to touch on something that you said maybe about 45 seconds ago when we talked about, you know, helping people overcome the spirit of insecurity. Um, first, I want to say, too, especially, you know, since a lot of people know him as a psychotherapist, as, a, as an author, I'm not, I did not want to, um, and I don't think that we wanted to do the show to uh, expose um, anybody for having this spirit of insecurity. I don't think that we wanted to do anybody any harm and be malicious at all. Um, because I have, an, uh, I have a respect for people, especially people who come into therapy wanting to work and improve and uh, somewhat eradicate that spirit of insecurity so that they can become their best self. And I think the one way to do that, as you alluded to, for me personally, um, you and I spoke earlier about how, you know, for myself, the, one of the ways that I transcended the spirit of insecurity was there were a couple moments in my life where I was stripped spiritually naked by God, by the higher power, by the universe, whatever, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call him or her. And there's a moment, there was a moment for me where I realized, man, like, I'm in the most embarrassing state that I could ever be in. Didn't, I did, didn't ever think that, that I would be there. It was so humbling. It was so uh, uh, embarrassing. But it was also so freeing because I realized that I could deal with it. 
You know, I always bring up how um, David Chappelle said they're going to the Apollo and getting booed was the worst thing that could ever happen to a comedian and it happened to him. But he said, you know what? It was so good that I experienced that because it was the basis of the rest of my career. If you have had these embarrassing moments, if you had these humbling points, if you're fearful of these humbling points, what I call having toxic anticipation that something bad could happen, listen, that could be the moment that you actually become more secure in yourself. There's a thin line between all opposites, as again I said I wrote in one of my books, that you know the very thing that you fear happening, the very worst thing that has happened to you that has sparked the spirit of insecurity, is the same thing that could spark um, your best self, if you will. Um, BJ, uh, I wanted to uh, maybe shift gears for a second okay. and um, ask you another question. I do have another question from uh, Brother LJ. And uh, we'll get into some more questions, but this is this is a more specific question. He asked, "Why are celebrities like uh, Bow Wow insecure when <laughs> they appear to have everything?" And let me see that. Uh, what is the... So yeah, so 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 let me ask two questions at once. So his first question is, "Why are celebrities like Bow Wow uh, uh, insecure whenever they appear to have everything?" Question two is, "What is the root of the problem when it comes to insecure adults, both men and women?" Wow, uh, I feel like we could write a novel on it, but let's <laughs> let's let's short it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's make it more of um, a, a broad statement, or at least a thesis statement, in regards to uh, celebrities like Mr. Bowiezy, Bowizzle, Bowizzle, insecure when he appears to have everything, because that 15 minutes of fame, man, that 15 minutes of fame in his eyes, again, he's supposed to be mainly in touch with himself. Uh, he was supposed to be working on his craft. I, I haven't really heard any of his, his new work, but in my opinion, uh, to Mr. LJ out of Atlanta, that 15 minutes of fame may be over, but it's time to open up a new, a new door for another 15 minutes of fame. And to my, to my knowledge, he did have an acting career. He was a host of uh, 106 in Park. Yeah, he calls himself Mr. 106 in Park. So he may just be at that stage where he's a couple years behind us, so he might be 31. Yeah, he's, he's like, about 31, 30-ish. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say he's in a midlife crisis, but this is all new for him. He may be one of those alpha males on the outside based off of his financial gain. Exactly. But there are new Bow Wows coming who are now born in 2002. Mm. And to be honest with you, unless they're looking you up on YouTube, you have now become one of the archives. You're now a uh, part of history. Simulation. Which, which is not bad. Mm -hmm. if, I, if, if there was a chance that maybe you're an inside person for Mr. Bow Wow, let him know, man. Like, appreciate what you've done. There's nothing wrong with uh, letting individuals know at one point, yeah, this is what I've done, and I'm sure he still has some clout, but just the fact that the shifts have changed mm -hmm. to the point where you're no longer in the everyday conversation, right. that comes back to what I said. You can, you can flex about the money you have, you can flex about your status, but on the inside, you're cheating with insecurity. So I don't necessarily know if that is answering Mr. LJ's uh, uh, question about Bow Wow, but it appears to me, Sean, mm -hmm. and you can definitely help me out with it, it appears to me that he's in a, in a, in a dark period right now, maybe in his life. Mm -hmm. And what I was going to say to you before we go to part two of Mr. LJ's questioning, when it gets dark, your darkest point in your life, and when you go into a dark room or a dark cave, and this has happened to me spiritually, like how you made this personal, when it's dark, you can't see. So the most thing you can depend on is feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when it gets dark, you can't see. Now, now, now it's getting down to the meat and potatoes of your own spirituality. So you have to feel. You That's have to go with the inner peace, the inner spiritual. Because there's some things that the only person that matters is, is, is yourself. That's interesting. That's, uh, that, actually, I like that a lot. I'm going to reflect on that uh, later on. When it gets dark. When it gets dark, you can't see. The only thing that you really have is it's feelings. Is, and I guess that probably um, would lead me as a good conduit to my response because I think that we kind of already, let me, not, let me be more direct, I think that we really already answered the, the, this question. Just because you're rich, just because you're an alpha male, just because you got you know 5 million followers or 50, 
seven million followers. Um, it's because your body is on point. Um, you're, you're, nobody's immune to insecurities. Nobody, even secure people. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, 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 there's. I'm very secure in myself, but sometimes I'm peppered with insecurities. And I also wanted to say this, Mr. LJ, and then I'm gonna let you um, elaborate on that statement, not to cut you off, Mr. Sean. No, not at all. Father time, whether we're talking sports, we're talking in the physical being that God has provided us, Father time is undefeated. Absolutely. So a part of me wants to ask about the celebrity part uh, in, in regards to Mr. Bow Wow. Maybe he's having a hard time facing reality that you're no longer necessarily the cute twelve-year-old to the teen, the teen heartthrob. Right. Now you're a man. And man, what you're talking and about. And own it. And, and 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 to your to your last point, to your from your from your previous uh, um, um, bit about answering uh, LJ's question. Um, that's a beautiful statement, dude. I mean, that's that's one of the. I mean, you say you, you always say a lot of wise things, but that's what that really sent me into like having a quantum moment. Um, when you said that when you get into when you're when you're in a dark place and you can't see, you just the only thing you have is your is your feelings on the inside, which leads me to my other part of both of LJ's questions. Um, no matter how you know, no matter how many goals I have, no matter how many um, things that I want to accomplish in life, if I don't ever get them, guess what? I still get the I, I get the experience. Me, mm -hmm. still get the experience shown. You know what I mean? Like being stripped down spiritually naked and being in the, just the humbly embarrassing state for a period of time, it was so freeing for me. It was so embarrassing. It was so uh, scary. It was so dark. But it caused me to go seek who I was on the inside. For sure. So whenever you talk about how maybe Bawa was only, or a person was only able to um, be with, with the inside of themselves, that's an even more scary moment because so many, that's, that's the problem. People don't really know who they are. They don't have any self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Or they have little self-awareness. They have a limited awareness of who they are. And the insight to them is like, kind of like going to a foreign country. They ain't never even been there. You know what I'm saying? So we don't have that. We don't have that. It's like, what do you fall back on? And I pray that his elders or, you know, the people that came before him, I know that he was um, somewhat connected to uh, Snoop. Snoop Lion, Snoop, Snoop Dogg, Snoop Cowie. I mean, whatever he is now. <laughs> right. Uh, the dog father, you know, et cetera. I know he was connected to Snoop at one point. Um, it appears on the outside. Let's make it. Let's make it clear. It appears on the outside that he's doing well for himself. So I hope that he somewhat mentored him or, or tried to drop some gems on him and let him know that there comes a time and point where you know you need to think of different material. Mm -hmm. And if you had all these layers of just superficial things, um, that could have cause for error. Even when it comes to someone like a celebrity. Celebrities do have, uh, have many flaws just like the rest of us. Absolutely. And if they're not consistently working on their quote-unquote craft or working on more important, the, the character off the camera. Mm -hmm. Because that character on camera, Bow Wow, made you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. What did that character do off camera? Absolutely. So with that said, we want to highlight again, uh, uh, as we talked a lot about um, the problem, we also want to highlight the solution. As BJ and I are saying right now, I, I, we, we just, I cannot state this enough. One way to get over, through, or to transcend the spirit of insecurity is to embrace those insecurities and to still love yourself despite those. I mean, I teach that, I coach that, explore that in therapy so much. I mean, there's a thin line between all opposites. So the very things that are causing you fear, that are causing you anxiety, that are causing you inner turmoil, these are also the things that can set you free. There's many things about myself that I would love to change. I got flaws all day long, you know what I mean? But guess what? I love myself despite those flaws. I love myself despite the things that I don't have. It's, it feels good to experience the resilient Sean, the best Sean, no matter uh, 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 how much money I may make in the future, no matter how many accomplishments and accolades I get. There's no, account, there's no reward that I could be given in the physical like I have inside of me, existentially. So let's take a break. Mm. Let's take a break. <laughs> let's take a break, and we'll be back with the next segment. This is Sean DeBJ with the Power of Perspective. All right, welcome back to the Power of Perspective, the talk show with Sean and my main man, BJ. Um, got a lot more questions that we want to uh, try to get through. Um, we're going to do our best. Uh, BJ, I'm just going to go ahead and start off with uh, one of the questions as we maybe as we, as we bring up uh, something that really gets people seething. 
uh, boiling and just very uh, uh, hot tempered in race. Oh. In race. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so, so you know, there's a uh, there's a book that I've been reading by uh, Professor Dr. Michael Eric Dyson, and it's mm -hmm. called uh, The Debate About Race. And so many fascinating things have come up in it, BJ. And you know, he talks about um, something called white fragility. You know what I mean? How you know, white some some European descent people of European descent. The, the moment race even is brought up, and this, is, this could probably be black fragility, it could be African fragility, it could be Hispanic fr fragility, but he says that white fragility, and th it's n this is not original to him, this is a, oh, I think it's a woman's research uh, article that she had there, but I can't, can't remember her name, but it's not specific to um, him or the other man, I think it was Taylor Branch who was on the show. But they talk about how white fragility is whenever it's a, a comment about race is brought up, Mm -hmm. And, you know, certain people of European descent are so fragile that just you bringing it up, you know, you know, causes them to, you know, just to go bananas, to, to start to see it and become, you know, a, a, a toxic, toxic and negative. So one of the uh, one of our viewers had had a question in terms of like how the spirit of insecurity relates to maybe racism. Um, and this is Julio from Pittsburgh. And he asked, uh, why do racist incidents happen? Obviously, we're talking about the spirit of insecurity, but we're also dealing with uneducated individuals. Sometimes being insecure is a lack of knowledge in itself also. You just talked about um, what uh, Brother Dyson had touched on and how he got that obviously from someone else yeah. that, you know, it could throw somebody off. Well, when you're dealing with race, and I know this is such a touchy subject, but I feel like it's, it's definitely needed. And it's prevalent even in 2018. One of the biggest problems is we don't address the fact that maybe that is one of your flaws. I just told you off camera, Sean, that I have a, I've had an incident for the last three years where I have to um, work and facilitate with someone who admitted to me that they struggle with being... Um, not an open racist, but a troll. I t you know, that's not necessarily my forte, but there are trolls out there. And, you know, to our viewers who, who understand what the troll, um, the troll Olympics are, I guess, is to see how many people you can can say racist things on the Internet, <laughs> on all these different social media. That's so, wild, man. Yeah, that's no. Wild. But I had to give him a lot of credit for, number one, admitting I struggle with that. Yeah. Now, could that be from a fact of his parents let him down and, and, and didn't meet him halfway and explain to him why they're racist? Because if it's just based off a of skin tone, mm -hmm. now I will say that that is not only um, elementary, but it also seems almost hysterical. Mm -hmm. But the reason why these incidents, I think, occurs because the offended party seems to not be training spiritually. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to elaborate more on please, that? Please, please do. If if the quote-unquote African-American race seems to be the ones who is, who's uh, offended by um, some of these racial slurs or some of these <laughs> trolling Olympics that's going on, people calling you out your name, some of the best ways to combat that is either A, not respond, or definitely already prepare yourself for an educated comeback. You know, and that, and that, in my own personal situation, I've, I've found out. Now, I hope I don't offend none of our viewers because some viewers may look at me and say, why are you even going back and forth with him? Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm working on my character. There will be another time in life where I will be offended, but it's not my job to change him. It could be my job just to plant the seeds. Will you, as you answer that question, you bring up the the idea of education, right? So you're mm -hmm. you're saying that sometimes racism happens, racist incidents happen, because people are too educated or people are uh, uneducated. And both, I, uh, both parties. Right, right. Yeah. It's, it's true, and I agree. Um, I also think that some people are maybe. I don't want to say I don't want to say you can ever be too educated. I want to say you can ever have too much information. But if I was, let's say, European, and I have issues with the spirit of insecurity, both with. Uh, not just Europeans, but also with African people, uh, with uh, all races, if you will. Yeah. Um, but like, if, if if you become aware, this is why I, I I'm not gonna say I like Jared Taylor. For those of you who know who he is, I think that sometimes Jared Taylor gets uh, ascribed with the wrong connotations. I I don't think that he's 
a white supremacist, so to speak. I think that um, I have my own opinions about Jared Taylor, um, but he's he openly talks about how you know, like he to me he he don't say really anything different than Dr. Umar Johnson say, but because he's because he's white and he says this openly, people have issue with it. Like he loves sure. he loves European, like he loves white people. That's his people. I feel like he should be able to say that. George Lopez loves his people. He exactly George Lopez. Like nobody should be called a white supremacist because you love. European people. I have no problem with that man saying that. I'm actually happy that he says that, but he gets attacked constantly. Um, but there are, there are some things about his views and ideologies that I do, do disagree with, but not that. The reason why I bring that up is that he's aware that his people are a global minority. Right? The white, the white the right. European race. Right. Europeans are, I think, they're less than 10% of the world. Um, that can spawn yep. some insecurity. If you know that you are the um, least uh, not want to say dominant, but if you are the, if you are of the smallest cohort of people on Earth, and you're not populating the Earth like you used to, and you're not reproducing like you used to, yeah, like sometimes these these racist incidents happen because not not are you un un uneducated, but you be actually gain enough education to recognize that oh shoot, we dying out, or you know what, like we are. We might not exist. That's going to spawn some that we have to up the ante. Exactly, and I think that you know, you know, I actually think that that, that President Trump's presidency, in some ways, <laughs> is a representation of, um, like you know, certain. Not all. I don't want to make any blank statements, but certain white European males realizing that they're losing power, mm -hmm. and I actually think that people are actually feeding into this like insecure, insecure spirit because they don't recognize that look. The fact that Donald Trump is the president might actually be a good thing because it might mean that, yo, like, think about a kid. When a kid stops getting what he wants, he throws a tantrum or she throws a temper tantrum, mm -hmm. right? Power, when power is being taken away, you get a immature person doing immature things. And to me, on some level, that's what Donald Trump represents. Um, but also with this BJ, I actually, and I want you, I want you to touch on the, uh, on the African thing. I have a major problem with the insecurities of Africa, not just African Americans, but African people from the continent of Africa. Not all, but some. You sure? <laughs> not all, but some, yeah, and throughout history. Uh -huh. Because what you find, BJ, is that African people sometimes, get some African people, like they will not only sell out their people, not only sell out their goods, but they will sell out their people. It can overcompensate. Nah, I'm, I'm, nah, not to overcompensate, they will literally sell out, like, you know what I'm saying, oh, they got, they got yeah. goods, they got goods to sell, you know, whether it's food, whether it's clothes, whether it's jewelry, but they'll also sell the people out, hey, that's why me and you here right now in America, because we got, oh, so, you, <laughs> we got sold over here, you know what I'm saying, oh, yeah. and oh, the problem yeah. I have with, with that is that I found, again, I, I can only go off the research that I've done, African rulers of different times have uh, given up land, sold land away, sold assets away, sold people away, sold all, all, all their power. It's like Do Dr. Claude Anderson says, he says, if you, don't con if you don't own anything, you don't control anything. And so many, because, because people just are in love with money, you have so many African leaders that have sold away so much that could keep them in power, but you want this money. B, if I sell my house that I own for, let's say, $300,000, right? Now I get this money, to maybe buy things, and maybe buying things. I'm so if I'm so insecure, I want that money because I can go buy stuff. But owning the house or owning ten houses will give me power, will give me control. And I feel like I feel like a lot of African, not a lot, but I feel like some African people in leadership positions today and in the past have been so insecure that they have been willing to receive money, this paper money that means nothing, and they give up true wealth, true assets, true control, true uh, control. And I just think that's another maybe non-traditional look at his question about race. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot to, you know, take from that, um, mm -hmm. to take from the take that you just gave to the viewers. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more in regards to some of my personal, because I like how you made it organic and let the people know that in your opinion, mm -hmm. and you made it known because I don't want anybody misinterpreting or more important mis mis uh, being mis misrepresented. Excuse me right. from your comment. Some Africans, I do believe that once again, it comes back to education. But there should be a happy medium. Right. You don't want to necessarily be 
uninformed. I agree. You know, and you don't want to be uneducated, but you don't want to be overly educated, and more importantly, by who? <laughs> great, great Because point. when you're educated yes. by someone whose spirit is not necessarily in the spirit of giving, and when we talk about Africa as a continent, um, it's a little bit bigger than America, wouldn't you say? Uh, just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. There are so many different mores and ideologies and different cultures, and we are a beautiful. I, I look at Africa as my mother, mm. my mother biological mother, mother, who gave me to a foster mother. Now, I don't want to get... That's interesting. Oh, oh, yes. I definitely feel like uh, I'm an orphan. This is me and my own spiritual journey. This is, this is something that could change overnight. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. I sincerely doubt it because there's a reason why, you know, we're having this take today. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do believe that the spirit of insecurity comes back to generations being passed down to feeling some type of guilt. Mm -hmm. But what's very funny is that same insecurity demon... Mm -hmm. Because now we didn't turn her from a woman from an earlier segment. So I'm going to call her a demon now. Uh, it exists in a white race. Hey, just, uh, just for, you know, we we not demonizing women. Oh, no, 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 no. no. We, Thank not. you, Sean. Thank you, no, no. Thank you, Sean. Man, we, we don't want to wrap up and they like, man, them dudes is definitely right. rashing the women. Right. No, it's just earlier in the show for those who uh, maybe just tuned in. Earlier in the show, I had said insecurity. I look at her as a beautiful woman with many faces. But now we're talking about insecurity. I'm looking at it as a demon. That same insecurity of feeling that guilt of, you know, being informed that African, quote unquote, Americans mm -hmm. are uh, different and they have different ideologies. And I've been told this in my own personal experiences that some brothers and sisters from the motherland have been told to stay away from us. You're right. Right. Um, this is, and you know, it deep, it hurt me. It hurt me. But guess what? This is where the spirit of insecurity um, is combat. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's being met with force mm -hmm. from that other uh, spirit of being fearless. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, explain to me why you were told to stay from me. And who told you that? Right. Right. But that same demon of insecurity from the quote-unquote motherland, we're experiencing that here on this soil. And that's why I really don't have a problem with, you know, talking about this segment. I, I I'm not gonna lie to you, Sean. It was definitely unexpected, but I'm 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 going to say this once and for all. I appreciate having this because I feel like this is very important going on to the next stage. We're getting some of our uh, not necessarily our frustrations, but our concerns out on the table Absolutely. for our viewers. Uh, yeah, I feel like an orphan. I do. I feel like you know us here in America on the soil, us being quote unquote African Americans, people from different distant lands. We've been sold, we've been lied to, we've been misinformed. Um, now that we're in the golden age of technology, we're able to look up certain things, but then we still get a whole bunch of uh, different misguided and redirected uh, with different people's ideologies. It's always someone else's history, always somebody different documentary, just so many different explanations on how we got to this point. So I look at that as there is some insecurities with people from the quote unquote motherland because Sometimes I do believe they know the truth. Now, someone may say that's watching this. Well, what is the truth? Uh, I think some of them don't. Like yeah, some, some, yeah some, that's some, true too. Know, and maybe a lot more of them. That whole divide and conquer uh, 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 mission I'm was, bring that up was, too. was 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 epic. And 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 these brothers know who I'm talking about. Um, I met a brother from Sudan who knew the same narrative that I was taught in the second grade. You know how we were sold here. I met another brother from Nigeria who said they didn't even know that the slave trade exists. <laughs> now, I think he exaggerated and I think his insecurity uh, may have just taken over the yeah. atmosphere because yeah. he may have thought that I was going to physically take out some of my um, frustration on him, which, <laughs> which is so, which is so you know, not likely. Funny. Maybe in my 20s yeah. I might have wanted yeah. to, you know, um, uh, finesse his temple a little bit. But, um... <laughs> But now, you know, in my 30s, you know, I look, I love to sit down and, and try to get to the meat and potatoes, but that insecurity from quote-unquote Africans, right. you meet that with the Asian. Yeah. You meet that with some of the quote-unquote Aboriginals or the Native Americans. Why is there such a big insecurity when it comes to dealing with people? I'll say it's due to either over-education or lack of education. Well, the, There's no medium. 
and that and that's why I say that's why I say be that the spirit the spirit of insecurity probably affects more people than cancer or more, probably affects more more people than cancer and AIDS and all that dude man and that's oh. not that and that's not to meant to be a derogatory native statement to anybody but that spirit of insecurity is just a that's a, it's a bad man pajama. Got to take a break so that we can go into uh, our, 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 our final segment. But we're looking forward to you all uh, staying tuned with us for the season finale of 2018's Power of Perspective, the talk show with Sean and BJ. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Power of Perspective, the talk show with Sean and BJ. This is the season finale. Um, just a, another uh, uh, final for this season uh, uh, statement to just to let you all know that we are super, super duper appreciative for you all giving us uh, the time that you have this season, this year. And uh, we understand that uh, you could have been anywhere doing anything, but you've been spending your time with this talk show. And uh, we truly appreciate that. Um, to wrap things up, BJ, uh, we have a, a, a question from North Carolina from Ms. H. Um, and her question is, can insecurities ever be healthy? Man. What do you think about that one? Tighten your stomach up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, 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 that's a great uh, question, but I'll, I'll sum it up. Yeah, it can be healthy if it's addressed. Mm, mm, I like that. Wow, that was, my gosh, like... <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Jeez, I mean, like, should we have the show? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, say a little more about that. Back to um, the personal experience I had with the Caucasian man uh, that I work with time to time who admitted, yeah, man, uh, I struggle with racism. I mean, he went as far as saying, you know, quarterback, black quarterbacks, uh, he can't believe in them. Mm -hmm. Black coaches are incompetent. Wow. Gee. I just can't get into uh, black. Um, education mm -hmm. you know he, he just was intellectual yeah. he said I, I don't respect black intellectual I guess he just was waiting for us to have wow. a, a bone in our nose and wow. be cooking people I guess on the beach <laughs> I, 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 I don't know but at first <laughs> you know I'm, I'm just saying I don't I don't know but oh, some God. some some of our viewers again especially those who, who might be hitting home yeah, yeah, they yeah, probably like you know, they probably looking at us like or looking at me specifically you a sucker for even talking to him no, 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 no. Let, let, oh, let, let, let me explain. Uh, I think it's very, it's, it's a fun exhibition when you're dealing with um, someone who you already know that you're going you're gonna to win because, again, that insecurity thing, when it comes to this, this race, when it comes to that, it needs to be addressed. But I have to give that individual credit. If he ever sees this video, man, I love it. Like, at least you admitted it to mm -hmm. me. I think that's some of the, I think that can lead to some of these solutions absolutely absolutely um I, I, that's actually divine that you would uh, uh make that just that incredible own it. statement just own it. exactly because my only response to that would be um i, I mean just to agree to yeah like if they're addressed like i said earlier like the same things that cause you to be insecure is the same things that could cause you to be more secure, right? When you get stripped spiritually naked and your flaws are exposed and you're in a situation where like it's just humbling, that's that's some people's not breaking point, but like Kanye said, that's they break through. You know, so yeah. I, don't really have, I don't really have any more to say about that. Well, I wanna uh, uh, bring the conversation back uh, in a cyclical way, um, just to uh, bring us to a, um, bring the show to an end. And say that you know one of the, the issues that I have, or another one of the issues that I have with the spirit of insecurity is that it just it just causes so many just uh, um, um, issues in, in people's spirit in their being. Like you know you got people who, and again this ain't just a black thing, African thing, but so many people like want you to see, look what I'm doing, look what I'm doing. Like you're so insecure that like it's less about like with perspective, right? I love to get in the compliments. I don't say I love. It. I appreciate getting the compliments about oh you wrote 12 books. Oh, you got your own company. Oh, you're this for that company. I mean, like, it's nice to hear that, but um, that's not why I do it. You know, I don't. Have, I'm, I don't even have to be the person in front. You know what I mean? Like, it ain't about showing. It ain't telling really the about, truth too. Yeah, it, it, it ain't about really about perspective. Like, it's really about, as I say with this, with the viewers, with the listeners, with the people that I see in therapy, I, I say, thank you for sharing your time with me. Like, that's the beautiful mm -hmm. essence. It's about yeah. us. You know what I mean? It ain't look look at look at perspective. Oh, I wrote twelve books. Look at me. Like that's not. I'm not insecure like that. But you got so many people that are so insecure that 
they want you to they want you to know everything that they're doing. They want you to know all this stuff. You know why? Because they and celebrities. Celebrities oh, are, are, are one of the reasons why they celebrities because they insecure. Um, just wanted to uh, to also give some quotes from some people that you know some historical people that uh, have had their struggle have had struggles with uh, uh, insecure people. Jeff Van Gundy just this year. Right, NBA. 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 Yeah, yeah. Now he's, I think he's an analyst or journalist, analyst. whatever you ESPN. want to call it. ESPN. Mm -hmm. He made an incredible statement. They were playing uh, the Knicks. It was the Knicks versus the Pacers on the 31st of October, 2018, and just randomly he said, he said it's not natural for people to enjoy the success of other people. They were talking about NBA players, but that's true. He said it's not natural for people to enjoy the success of other people. Now, let me throw in a word there. It's not natural for insecure people I was about to, say, to enjoy the success of other people. Talking? Who's he talking <laughs> about? And that's why I had to clarify it. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. But then you have Malcolm X, right? Oh. Ma Malcolm X said this, and I, and, and I find it wow. so fascinating because this is the reason why some people don't even want to be in the spotlight. Whenever Malcolm X, he was asked by somebody uh, uh, in an interview, about like being a leader, he said, I find that to say you're going to lead something creates a lot of hostility, division, jealousy, and envy. He said, I hope to work with a group of leaders and organizations, like collectively. Do you have a date on that? <laughs> um, I can get one. Uh, okay. I can get one when he said it, but this was, obviously this was like, you know, 50, 60, 70 years. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know how many people say they're leading? Oh my gosh, my gosh. My gosh, yeah, so many people say yeah, it. Yeah, man. So many people say it. I mean, what was Kanye's, um, somebody asked, we didn't get to the question, but I guess we'll get to it, Kanye. Now, somebody asked what's the difference between self-esteem and insecurity, right? And the best way I can answer that is that when you, like, if you look at the definition, insecurity is dealt with, like, fears, mm -hmm. right, doubts. Yeah. Self-esteem deals with, um... Confidence. Confidence. And yourself. Self-respect. What's the line from uh, Kanye? The people highest up. What, 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 what is it? Um, it seems we live in the American dream, but the people highest up got the lowest self-esteem. You know what I'm saying? Like, like how, like how, how? For lack of better words, or for you know, Kanye's not really in the, in the, in the favors of a lot of people right now. Sorry. But, but my gosh, like that's such a that's such a true statement. We appreciate him for what he he is. He exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, Bj, any final thoughts that you have about the spirit of insecurity? No, I just uh, it, it just sucks that this this show has to end. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, I, that's y'all want organic, y'all want authentic, authentic, authenticity. authenticity yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Um, I I wish we had more time. Well, I do too. But as we always say, we could probably do. We can run it back and do a do, do a part, <laughs> part two. two. The only thing that I would like to leave everybody with, um, in addition to what we've already said, is uh, some words from Dr. Umar Johnson. Powerful words. He says, when you're proud to be who you are, you don't try to be something else. That seems like too close to, to right, you know? <laughs> That's pretty easy to digest, too. Yes. Say that one more time. When, you're, when you're proud to be who you are, you don't try to be something else. And I just feel like that's a great point to end on because the spirit of insecurity is what causes people to try to be something else. But when you're proud to be who you are, you know, you don't want to be anything else. Listen, you all, it's been a great year. It's been, a, it's been an epic it's year. A, um, I don't really believe in calendar years, but we're going to keep this energy going for as long as we are, are blessed to uh, do it. You know what I mean? We are appreciative of you, uh, BJ and I, and we look forward to uh, more moments with you with the power of perspective with Sean and BJ. Enjoy your time, enjoy your holidays, enjoy your new year. Hey, we send you our love. Be Take safe. care. Peace.